in exercise six, we're going to look at shear and perspective. You know, up till now, we've been looking at objects that have moved in, in one sort of direction. They've either been sliding from left to right, or they've had um, scale or rotation going on. What we haven't really looked at is when things start to move and distort in 3D space. So actually the majority of our shots, really. So let's take a, a quick look at this here. So we've got our same card moving around and we can see that we're not going to be able to tackle this just by uh, trying to reposition our shape um, up and down left and right or scaling it or just rotating it uh, in the, the sort of circular Z rotations we looked at in the last exercise. So we're going to have to use one of the other options we've got down here, shear or perspective or shear and perspective. And one of the most common questions that I get asked is what is the difference between shear and perspective? Let's take a quick look at my test shot here. Now the object on the left is distorting in a way that is, well, it's scaling up, scaling down, moving around and doing some, a quite interesting sort of, uh, of movement. But it's, as you can see, it's sort of more distorting and stretching. So that's one particular type of movement that we've got there. Now, if we look at the object on the right, this is moving in, well, it's, it sort of looks like it's uh, rotating around in 3D space. It's also scaling up a little bit or just distorting around a little bit here. So we've got two different types of movement. Let's have a look at how these are, uh, are tracked using the different uh, the different methods. So I'm going to look at my objects on the left first. And I've already got my uh, track done here. So this has already been tracked in. I can see the parameters I've used. I've just had shear turned on. So let's take a look at what that looks like with the surface on and with our grid turned on as well. So let's uh, play this back, have a little look. And now we can see that that track has actually worked out really nicely. It's, it's tracking the movement in absolutely perfectly just with shear. Now what shear is doing is it's tracking in a warp um, that, that really only resides in, in two corners. So imagine, for example, if you just hold down the sleeve of your um, shirt or your jumper and just sort of pull that up a little bit. If I was tracking that shirt there, that, that little movement, that distortion upwards as you sort of stretch it out, that would be quite nicely tracked with shear. Now, let's see how the uh, left hand works when we track it in perspective. The only difference between this, uh, this and the other one, both of the shapes, both the start shapes are exactly the same. Um, the only difference uh, here is I turned on perspective down here in the motion. And we'll track that in there. And you can see that we're still getting a, uh, a, a good and actually very solid track because there is a hierarchy to the type of tracking that we're doing. You know, if we turn on perspective, we're automatically having shear, rotation, scale and translation um, tracked in or compensated for as well. So if something can be tracked with shear, uh, we're going to be getting a good result with perspective as well. Let's take a look at the uh, the other side. We'll take a, have a look at the right hand shape and that starts over here. Let's change my project settings here. So just change the, the range from frame 308 to 600 and we'll play this one back. Now this here is set to, set to shear and let's just remind you of the type of motion we've got going on here. So we've got a type of motion that's much more reminiscent of um, rotating in, in 3D space. So let's look at the next one here. And you can see that shear actually just hasn't been able to completely capture that motion totally accurately. because the movement of this object is actually moving with, with all four corners. 
You know, it's not just warping in, in two corners, it's warping with four. So let's have a look at how the other version turned out, the uh, one with perspective turned on. Again, everything else has been exactly the same. The only difference I made was turning perspective on here and, render, and uh, tracking through. And we turn that on and that has tracked that in perfectly. So you can see where we do have objects that are moving in, moving significantly or rotating significantly in 3D space or doing X or Y rotation, then uh, perspective is gonna be an absolute must to, uh, to get that in. Now smaller uh, rotations or smaller, smaller changes can usually be picked up with shear. And if we don't use perspective, we just use the shear tracking, that can be slightly faster to, uh, to track through. Each time we add another layer of complexity to our tracking model here, we do pay a small fee in terms of, uh, of, of time that it takes to process through. But given how fast uh, modern computers are, even tracking through large shapes in HD frames with perspective turned on, you know, we're, it's still tracking through at a, a decent speed. And the difference between shear and perspective, even in that case, is going to be very small. So let's see how that works out in, in practice. Let's open up a new project. We won't save that one. And we're back to the other bit of footage that we, we saw earlier on. And we'll quickly draw our shape in here. It's a fairly simple shape, and I'm just going to use the reposition the surface straight away just so we can see when this does go a bit awry before we move on. Now I can't see the, the actual fourth corner over here, but I can judge where it's going to be based off the other three. Cool. Okay, and let's just, uh, we'll call this one shear. And we'll look at the uh, the parameters here. The input channel, I'll, I'll leave at luminance, that's fine. Uh, min minimum percentage of pixels used 30, that's fine as well. Let's track that forwards. Slipping there. I think it might be slipping because we do have a very fixed pattern. So what I might do is actually just extend that out, extend our shape out just a little bit. So it takes uh, takes the edge as well. So I don't mind going and getting a little bit of the uh, of the background as well here. And let's see if that makes a difference. It certainly does. So let's track that forwards again. And we can see the same problem that we had before. I'm going to stop it here because there's no point carrying on with this. It's the same problem that we had with the other footage, which is the shear just isn't able to, to cope with this level of, uh, of rotation in X and Y. So what I'm going to do, just duplicate this up. I'm going to call this one perspective. And just as we did before, come to the dope sheet and just delete all the other keyframes there. Everything else is going to stay the same. I'm just going to turn perspective on here. We'll turn the tracking and visibility off on our shear and we'll just track through perspective now. And see, I've made absolutely no other changes. And yet here we are getting in a very nice and accurate track. Let's see how it handles the motion blur. Oh, we can see we've got a bit of a bit of slippage because of the motion blur. So I'm going to stop that there. Go back a little bit here. And as I said um, in a previous exercise, if we can uh, avoid using the adjust track, that would be very nice. So at this stage here, where the motion blur is going to go a bit crazy, you can see I've got good or clear areas going on here, which is different to where my, where my shape is. So if I just extend this shape out, you can see it's not changing my surface or my grid because the surface and grid are separate to the shape data. The shape data is just the thing that, that's generating up the tracking data. And let's see what happens if I um, 
I track this through again. Still losing it a little bit there. Let's um, actually come in and get rid of the other tracks. And let's see what happens if I turn my minimum percentage of pixels used, turn that up. See if I get a better or worse result. And also turn my angle up here because it's rotating quite a bit. So we saw that before. And something's gone wrong. I think I've accidentally adjusted my surface at some point. So I think I must have touched that when I was adjusting the shape. So that's gone a little bit weird, but let's bring that back in. Okay, and bring us back to the track that we've got. And let's see what happens now. We've got the angle turned up, the minimum percentage of uh, pixels turned up and our shape is a bit bigger. That's now hanging better. Still not 100% perfect, but it is, but it is hanging better. So let's take us down to, let's turn the surface off for a second and take our shape down here. Turn the surface back on and try and track that through again. There we go, it has slipped a little bit here. But I think we can adjust that out because it's it's going to be a quite a nice linear slip when it's gone, when all things are uh, said and done. And there it is finished. So let's take a, a quick look here and we can see that the fundamentals of this track is actually good. You can see that we, we're not getting any sort of big bounce or jitter. It's holding onto the card quite nicely. We've just got a few issues where things have slipped at certain times, and that is the perfect opportunity to pop back into the adjust, tra uh, adjust track as we did before. So just to go over that again, we're gonna go to our last good frame, come into the adjust track. That sets our master frame up. We can move to our next worst frame, which is gonna be this one here. Try and adjust that one up. That's this corner as well. We can nudge that down just a wee bit. That one I can just hit, just hit auto on the other two. We'll check that through to make sure that we're not getting any big slips. Now I'm looking at the bottom left hand corner again and let's look at what happens in these zoom windows here. So I'm looking for when it slips. So we've got a good frame here. So I'll add a keyframe. Then I'm looking for the frame where it slips the most, which is gonna be here. Yeah, and let's adjust that back. And because the main data was actually fairly accurate, you know, that's, that's fixed the biggest issues. We've still got, you know, the other corners to look at, but just adding those few keyframes here, because the fundamentals of the track were good, you know, just making a few Keyframe adjustments here using the adjust track has fixed all those other problems up. And that's exactly how you should use the adjust track. You shouldn't use the adjust track to, um, to actually fix every second frame on your track there. Cool, so that was a quick look at the difference between uh, shear and perspective and how we start to identify the difference between those two movements and when we would use perspective motion over just simple shear motion. In the next exercise, we start to take this data out into other programs and start to see how we use this data in different ways. So uh, join me in exercise seven. Mm -hmm.